Hello my young Padawans, to plus the mouse for thought on episode 8 of Andor. Oh, what drag, really? Just drag, dragged a bit. I mean, that was what, fifth, an hour? Did not need to be an hour, honestly. I mean, you know, it's hard to judge when, with Disney Plus, but with the lengthy credits. But uh, I just felt it really dragged a bit. I mean, I said this at the end of the last episode we did, didn't I? If, um... <clears throat> We talked about the last episode. I was like, if we have to, if I have to watch the next episode with Cassian being a blood prison cell, I'm just gonna lose all interest. And lo and behold, that's what happened, and I have lost all interest. <laughs> I have lost all interest. Should we get the prison bit out of the way first? You know, just get the bit, get, get the bad bits. So I was gonna focus on the nice stuff because actually there was some nice stuff <laughs> involving Deidre. Watch and learn, Khan. Watch and learn. <laughs> right, let's get the nasty, gritty stuff out of the way. So, Cassian um, is brought to Nakina 5. Um, oh, my God. Every single moment we spent on Nakina 5 just literally made me just... Made the... He made the chills run down the back of my neck. It was that... Oh, my God. It was just so... Haunting. Just so... Chilling... So cold. It had a little bit of a con concentration camp vibes to it. Ooh. Just, no, I, 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 it just freaked me out every sing single point. So I'm kind of not looking forward to having to come back to that again in the next one because obviously Cassian's still there. But oh god. Um. But yeah, so. <clears throat> It really was really chilling to uh, to watch, and um, the obviously the table that Takas assigned to her five. I don't think we've really got opportunity to get to know them quite well at all. It was like, yeah, it was like they did a name roll call. It was like, ooh, names, hallelujah! Because I've been moaning at the, at the beginning of the season about how oh, it's everyone just oh, literally nobody seems to like spend like five seconds just to say hi, I'm so and so, but here. They made an effort! Just that she had forgot them all. I was kind of sort of half in, half out. I was like, okay, that's great! Yay! You, you, you're giving us an opportunity to get to know you. Just, um, unfortunately, I've not memorised them. So um, don't test me on it. <laughs> but yeah. But, um, I mean, also, we did see Cassie mocking them about a bit with them. But, um, but at the beginning, it was just... Uh, just no, I just, no, I just, no, I just, uh. it was very, very chilling having to watch all those, um, those prison scenes. It just really was very really so chilling, the cruelty of it, just, <sighs> but at the same time, it's, it's really hard to try, whilst they did their very best to make it chilling and blood curdling, at the same time, there isn't really any jeopardy to it because we know full world cat is not gonna stay there for long. He's gonna he's gonna I mean he's set, I mean if we remind him of his sentence at the end of the last episode it's was it six years or something? Got six years? Six years but literally doing what? Being in the wrong place at the wrong time. Um So you got six years. There's no way he's gonna be there. No, it's just this is where uh, uh, there's just no jeopardy. There hasn't really been any of that in Andor. There has just been like zero jeopardy. I mean, like with Obi-Wan Kenobi, this is a prequel series. Um, but the difference between Andor and Obi-Wan Kenobi, with Obi-Wan Kenobi, even though we knew where all the major players were going to be by the end of that series, you still, there, was there were moments where it still felt like, oh my god, those characters were really put in serious jeopardy. Here, it's just sort of meh. Meh. Yeah, uh, the, yeah, they may be stuck in the prison cell, but we know they're gonna get break go to a jail break so it's, it's a bit sort of, you know, meh, meh, meh. Just, no. I mean, there's just no jeopardy to it. I mean, you did really well in making the Kino Five so like the worst place in the co in the in the cause of the galaxy, but um, it's just not really. Just, I mean, it's just there's just no jeopardy to it because we know Cassian's not gonna stay there for long, so it's just sort of a bit of a. Meh, it's just a bit 
meh. Can I see that kind of felt this week? Kyle was like a backseat passenger, you know. You, you didn't really need need him, and whenever he did show up, it wasn't wasn't really doing himself or the story any sort of favors. So, hmm, so yeah, so it's a rare opportunity that where the main character is not really needed, um, because the focus was on all the other players. Like for instance, say to Mafia, <sighs> all her scenes are just. Oh, look, I was watching it this week before. Oh my god, this is all fake. Fake, 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 fake. As fake as her costume jewellery. Fake, fake. This all... Little... Oh, darling, I'd love to see you again. Do you want to have a sh sherry? Ah, get that down, you love. You need a good drink. So, oh, oh, yeah, no, we met... When we were, what was it? 16? We were already married by then, so... Uh, 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 uh. It's like, oh, did anyone see my, my um, accomplice from last week? Oh, no, is he, oh, he's gone. Oh, shame. <laughs> it's like, give over, love. Who are you trying to fucking kid? Who are you trying, who are you trying to fool? Because if it's, because if it's the viewer, <coughs> failed miserably there, love. It's like, just literally all those seasons, I just thought, fake, fake, fake. How long could she expect to keep this act up? It's just, oh, shh. It's just that. Like, it's just, oh, it's just, it's just literally, I wanted to literally just press skip. Literally, because I was just like, oh, can we move on? Bang. Just move on. Next. I literally just wanted to press the skip button because it was just, Because uh, it was just so much dribble. You know, just so much dribble. You know, I mean, she tried to put on this persona that she is, you know, this really, really raw respect to Zerta. Well, we know it's a complete, utter sham. I mean, her family life for a start's not blissful. So, who are they trying to kid? Who are they? Who is she li literally trying to kid? Because it ain't us viewers, that's for sure. I don't know. Oh, dear, dear. <laughs> and then, um, interestingly, the, rebel, the, rebel, the Rebels, they are seem to be like a really disc a discontent. They are literally just... Ca Literally, just work. They literally are at each other's throats, left, right, and centre. Um, particularly when we, we saw um, Rayle and Mafia bicker with all about the way they're going about Ferex, and then later on when Re on when uh, Rayel, um went to go meet with um, Sorgaria. I'm trying to remember. Was he in Rogue One? Was he the one in Rogue One? That end up getting killed. Well, they all get killed in Rogue One. But you know what I mean? Was he the one that he met when um, when they uh, they were testing the the, the Death Star? I'm trying because he looked for me because he looked for me. It's been it's been a while since I've seen Rogue One. I've only seen it once. Um, but I'm trying to remember. He, he, he kind of looked familiar. I to, and I was trying to remember. In fact, give me two seconds. And I'll look up. Rogue One's cast list. Cause I just thought, okay, you know, he's, you know, he didn't get named. I just thought, where have I seen him from? I think he looks familiar. Where do I reckon? Uh, surely I must recognise him somewhere. So, um, give me two seconds. So just Oh yes, yes. He is! Right, so Saul Ga Garrier, he was from Rogue One. He was a veteran of the Clone Wars and was a friend of the Urso family. Um, who had and had mentored Jin in her late uh, childhood years. So, yeah! I thought he looked for me. I thought, I recognise him something from Rogue I think he must be in Rogue One. He's got to be. Um, but, yeah, so, ah, so there we go. Nice to see him again. Um... He actually was quite good in Rogue One, except the problem was, of course, he got, well, they all, well, the problem with Rogue One is they all get killed. <laughs> but, um, he did quite well. Um, <laughs> um, yeah. I couldn't tell him Rogue One if he was supposed to be a mayor thing, or was he supposed to be, you know, on the rebel side, but eventually, of course, no, he's part of the rebels, he's part of the rebels, but, um, 
Yeah, but he um, um meets his sticky end um during um a test of the um of the Death Star. So they do them. They um they do like a little like a low power test shot, um, this which um destroys um Jedi's capital, and um that in does include um Gera um because he decides to remain in the city, so he makes so he makes a pretty sticky end. But everybody makes a sticky end by the Death Star. <laughs> but no, uh, but 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 his was more in, was more impactful than. What you see at the end of Rogue One with Jin and Andor, because it's just sort of... Are they dead? Are they actually dead? Or just also like a pretty white light? <laughs> but no, the assumption is everyone... <laughs> but no. So, ah! Oh, because I was watching the scene between him and Mel, I was like... He's so... I couldn't concentrate on the scene, because I was like... Where do I recognise him from? Where do I... Re I know him! I know him somewhere! Where do I recognise him? It's going to bug me. But there we go, so it's... So it's Saw Garrier from Rogue One. And I did quite like that, like that scene. What I loved was how Garrier was basically just sticking, li uh, literally just telling Rail to go do one. Because Rail is start is starting now to become a very, very irritating character. I I didn't know what to make of him when we first met him, but now we are sort of in the thick of it now. I'm kind of like, well, Rail, you're not really a very nice guy, and you're supposed to be on our. You're supposed to be on. The rebel side, and yet you're you're kind of more like just sticking out for yourself, no? And everything you you can't be more in, interested in self-preservation than the liberation of the galaxy, um, you know, because Bell and Cynthia have been sent out to buy Andor so they can to buy Cassian, um, so that Rhea can find out what Cassian knows and doesn't know, what he said and what's not said. So, uh. But no, but Rail starts to turn out to be a bit of a bastard. Ooh, I know that's probably strong because I've used my I've used my favorite swear word there. But Rail, I'm just starting to think he's starting to not be a really nice guy. And then again, you do if you wear wear black, then it's like it's just that's not me being prejudiced or anything. But I'm just like it's just it's just starting to be a bit a bit not nice. He's starting to put a bit of soul preservation, but. So I kind of liked when Garriere was kind of just sticking, sticking it to Rail, just like paying attention to go do one. I was like, you go, Garriere, you go, guy. You go, stick it to the man, suck it to him, suck it to him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you go, you go. But, yeah, because it was booked, so there we go. So, oh, so another familiar face from from Rogue One has made their appearance. Um... It was Boogaboo what she is like, I know, I can recognise him, I recognise him, but just can't pick it out, can't pick it out. There we go, there we go, there we go. So nice to see his presence there. Um, right, let's now get on to the really, really good stuff, which of course this week involved Deidre. <laughs> Deidre B. Khan, who wins? Oh, that's a trick question. Deidre wins. Put that squirrely little shit in place. Because Khan, Khan seems to just let it go. You know, everything that's been happening, that happened in the first first quarter, that first block, that first, because remember, because each, because the, these episodes, the card dialogue block, blocks are freeze. Um, um, so, uh, yeah, so... That first block of three, Khan just can't seem to let it go. I mean, because he still keep trying to file in complaints about oh, um, about and about Cassian. And, then, and if I was Deja, I'd be like to Khan. In the words of the great Hannah Montana, build a bridge and get over it. All right, you're doing yourself no favors, mate. Okay, let's not forget you're very lucky to actually be given a position here still. You're still you're very lucky to have a job after what you did get on for it. You're very very lucky you had a you got a job. Um, so don't blow it while you blow blow this last time. But I really really loved all the um the inter the kind of interrogation scenes because that's what it felt to me. The um 
interrogation scenes between him and Deidre. It was with Deidre questioning him about all what been happening on Ferrex and what is or what is not on the report and everything. Um, that her that the previous attend of Ferrex did and made, and made Khan sigh without even reading it. <laughs> it's like when you sign a contract, you you don't read the small prints like, what? Oh, oh shit, mate, you signed it now. Stuck with us for the next six years. <laughs> but I lo what I loved how was she actually let him re read it. Then when you come back, he's like, what? This is this is worse than I thought. It's like, there's no mention of this, no mention of it. It's like, right, what the cup is like? Woof, woof. It's like, oh, don't cry me a river, mate. <laughs> I loved it. I loved it. Just loved each other. Hey, taking card the down for size. So this is not. So this is not help. It's little man syndrome. Just make him the small, sniveling, weasel he is, and Deidre to be the super, superior one. It's always like these. I mean, these two, if, it, if, it, if the series if the went a different way, these two easily could have been battling to be top, top villain. Um, I mean, could have had it all series long. But no, it's worked out really because you can't already know who top villain is. That's Deidre. And at the very, very bottom is Khan. Who, and Khan has been, basically been the little, scrawny little shit who, despite the fact we keep telling you to go and piss off, still keep cropping back up and now then. But, ugh. Why didn't Cassian put a bullet to him when he had the chance? I don't know. Ugh. But I was just, but I was just sort of loving the, those um, scenes where, Literally, Deidre was just questioning Khan, and she was just being all oh, the, the, the mighty superior. Um, because I'm loving her, I've loved her. Khan, of course, hated. Um, so I was also thrilled that she did not um, take him up on his offer to try for assistance. I loved how she could easily see right through it, right through it. I could, right it. I love, I loved it, and I, was, I loved how the end was like. You bring this up one more time, would not me having to deal with. So. Okay, that's you've been told. But we all know Carl's not gonna listen, isn't it? Don't we? We know he's gonna stick his oil when it's not wanted, don't we? Hopefully that means he ends up dead. So we all know the Empire takes no nonsense, doesn't matter who you are or what side you're on. So hopefully actually no, carry on meddling, Carl, get yourself killed for us. <laughs> Oh my! Yeah. So Deidre now is trying to pick up, trying to basically where Carl left off, and she did a lot better job than Carl did. Because let's face it, when Carl did his excursion on Ferex, did he manage to catch anybody who's, who's suspicious of rebel activity? No. He just had his squadron just walk around, around pretending to be big soldiers when they're just tiny, tiny little boys who want to be bigger in so many places. <laughs> no, Deidre. One swift mood gets Bix arrested and strapped up, ready to be interrogated. Oh, I love that. I was loving that. I was like, don't. I was like, don't leave me there. We want to watch the bitch fight. But no. Sadly, we had to cut back to the Narkina 5 and have more chills at the back of our spines. Oh, please tell me I did not rhyme. Oh, for fuck's sake. Ugh, I hate rhyming. Um, yeah, so hopefully next week it's Deidre B. Bix bitch fight. Go, oh, love it, love it, love it, love it. Um, well, I'm kind of a bit upset. Kind of, I kind of, I'm kind of like, it would have been better if he'd left the Bix's fate until next week. So, because. She was on the run, and then it cut back to, um, and then it cut to, uh, Rayel and, and Garia. And I, and I was like, okay, that's fine. We can find what happened to Bix next week. But no, they came back to Ferex, and then they, and she was caught. And I was like, well, I'd like to have maybe a week pondering about that. Did she, did she not, did she not get away? Did she not go? Did she not go? No, she didn't get away. Got caught, strapped to the chair. It's about to get a little bit of a, about to engage in a nice little bitch fight with Deidre. 
I don't think Bix is going to win. <laughs> it's not going to be pretty! <laughs> Because this isn't because you're dealing with the big with the big boys now. Big girls now, Bix. Mm, we deal with the big girls now. Deidre takes the prisoners, as we've seen already so far. This series, she's proved her worth. Fear her, Bix. Fear her. <laughs> but yes, yeah, so that, that's an interesting little setup. Ready for what? Oh, I really hope next week. Really hope. I. Um, I just. It's gonna be very interesting to see how that plays out. Um. And also, speaking with Ferex, um, what's going to happen to Martha? Because obviously last week, of course, uh, the last episode, of course, she um, made very, very clear to Cassian, I'm not coming with you, I'm staying here. You know, we had that big little scene, didn't we, where it, we all got to fam adoptive family dramas, where he was like, come with me, he's like, I'm staying put. It's like, come with me, I'm staying put. You know? Whereas he didn't really understand sort of Martha's reasons, but of course we could, the audience could see why. No, but Martha, if you maybe went with him, Cassian might have got himself sent to Nokina Five. But uh, no, so no, so um, anyway, but she's not looking well, is she? What's happened to Martha since we last saw her? Because it looks like she's now on death's door. Like, oh, please don't kill her. No, she's... I mean, it's like, where's the fight? Where's that marble gone? That was my to stick it to Khan in episode three. It's like, she's still... It's always like she's now really four now. It's always like she's now acting her age. No, marble, we need to have like a red ball. Come on! Don't need a little quick little bug. Take some cow point be fine. Um... Not even, not even our BTEMO could even help it, it tell us what was going on. It's like, no, she's just sick. Just give us a cowpaw. Paracetamol, anything. Give her a cough sweet. No. It's like, you can't kill her off now. I wish she's in a prime. It's like, oh dear, oh dear. I mean, she was fine. She was fine last week when she was saying, Cassie, I'm not fussy and I'm staying put. You go swap, get yourself a bird. I'm going to stay here. Okay, she didn't say... Okay, yes, she didn't say that. But technically, that's what Cassian did, didn't he? Didn't, he, didn't go in, he didn't go into hiding. No, he went to the nearest vacation resort and got himself uh, on top of a bird. Let's not even... I'm not going to even go there either. Because it's just it's too stupid. Stupid. That's it. That's not how you have huge tip hides. Even even not his antics last the end of last week showed that he would not have lasted ten seconds on hunted. He would have been an early catcher for us hunters. <laughs> well, he was an early catcher. He didn't last five five minutes. But that's only because he because he was watching his back. No way. But no. But oh, what's happened to Marva? Oh, I'm not liking this. Ooh. No. But it was kind of nice we did still got to go back to Ferrex because you do wonder those cats on Ferrex will. <sighs> There's not really much more you could really do with them, is there? Now that Cassian's now a now wanted fugitive and can't even step foot there. So that's like, well, there's not really much left you can do with these characters. But it was kind of nice they still were still there. And of course, the girls will be a part of the story because obviously the fix. She's now captured. Although episode three did kind of see for foreshadow this, didn't didn't they? Because remember what point Bix did actually actually did get captured by Imperial forces. And then when Tim came along, did she manage to make a getaway? <laughs> so um, yeah. So she's not. So I'm actually I'm not surprised that Bix has done managed to end up getting captured because she, she hasn't done very well in evading capture than the last time. So um, it's her own damn fault. But um, hmm, that's gonna be interesting. I'm really looking forward to seeing. What's going to happen there? And like, and then what is Deidre going to do? Um, cause, oh my God, is she a smart cookie? She's work. She's working Deidre. She's brilliant. She's working all the. She's getting all the pieces together, and she's slowly, bit by bit, by bit by bit, she's connecting all the dots. And I'm just wondering now, how long is it going to take before she actually managed to piece it all together? 
See, Carl? This is what a, what a villain looks like. Take notes, da darling. You might learn a thing or two if you get to live. <laughs> but no, for me, that was the hardest part. It was, it was really sort of, just sort of dragged a bit. It's like, it's not, it's not worth an hour. It's not really worth an hour. I'm like, I'm kind of feeling like these episodes now are getting a bit too lengthy for me. I'm just like, well, there's not really much point because a lot of the stuff is kind of dragging a bit. You know, so it's just, mm, but yeah, but no. Yeah. There's some good bits, but mostly I was just like, sort of, I was uh, just sort of not really just paying attention or had chills to the back of my spine because of the mood at all, but yeah, not really. Yeah, it's, bit, it's, it's gone downhill now. It's going. It's going downhill a bit. No, oh, I'm not really looking for. Oh, we need to pick it back up. We need to pick it back up. No, but deep. But for me, the highlight of the week course was obviously Deidre literally just tearing over the car, just literally putting me in his place. That was just absolutely brilliant. Well, thank you so much for joining us for today's show. If you loved it, do click the like button. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, do click the uh, do click the subscribe button. That way, when you are subscribed, you will never see a when you click in came out across the mouse. Um, don't forget, you can also ring the bell to stay up to all this content. And my YouTube handle is George Hand, all lowercase. Until next time, all that's left me to say is the force with you. And all